Good morning. Oh, man. Yeah. God, good. I'm so happy to get back. Learning to get back on my knees again and pray. That's I, I admit, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I haven't been doing it. I just been getting up and saying some quick prayers and God help me keep it moving. Um, it's early Thursday morning and uh, I don't know, God's good. Sometimes it seems like when I'm being attacked, sometimes it kind of gives me strength. That's weird. So anyway, uh, I got a headache. I don't know what that's from, but I have a headache. And uh, Uh, between last night and this morning, I'm listening to uh, some of this is old school. I had an auntie that uh, used to have old albums, and she uh, she introduced me to Brooke Benton, and uh, this is Etta James. If you remember, uh, Beyonce redid some of her music, but I'm I'm listening to her, Brooke Benton, uh, some Solomon Burke. You know, I like stuff like that. I always had an old soul. <laughs> I know you like my little party bubbles and stuff because it's a party. I mean, uh, just revelations. I don't know about you, but God reveals things to me and, and just, he, he'll test you. Like they said, he won't tempt you, but he'll test you. And uh, sometimes I get a little uh, eye-opener as to, to a little bit of what, where he's leading me. And uh, anyway... This morning, like I said, I've been listening to Etta James and I'm rushing my breakfast down, and um, which is just toast, man. I working that job it broke me down, man. I lost like 20 pounds. All that walking I was doing, I lost a lot of weight, and um, uh, I like to eat for real, for real. <laughs> so couldn't eat. I was eating like one meal a day, cause it was third shift going to the next day. So when you see me and I'm all thin. With my friend would be down at the church all the time, be grabbing my arm, like, look at you, you know. Yeah, shaping up and losing weight. Nah, it's good sometimes, but shoot, I'll be hungry. <laughs> my shoulder bones and sour crab. I want some shoulder bones, sour crab. Mmm, -hmm, some meatloaf. Anyway, this morning in my meditation, mm, I was playing over in my mind all the things going on. Excuse me for eating and talking because I got to get ready to go out of here. I want to leave that early anyway, so I'm eating and talking. And um, I was just thinking about things, you know, like what's going on with her. And I started realizing from yesterday to day, I realized that God, I didn't realize it. Let me take that lie back out of my mouth before it comes out. God has revealed to me that. She's a tool of the devil, and the devil's angry because what he tried to—he meant for harm. God's turning it around for good, and it's turning around for good in that the devil wants you angry. He wants you to react. He wanted me to react and and and, and act all real stupid. I didn't do that. I went the legal way, and so now he's angry. So he's trying to you know do a little picking, but. At the same time, it has grown me and opened my eyes to some more things. And uh, this is some of the things I was thinking this morning. Like I said, I wish I could just have my uh, have my laptop on and uh, just start talking when I get up in the morning because it's so rich. I ain't lying. I, I you know, I got to tell myself, but it be, it be powerful when it's flowing in my mind. You know what I'm saying? It's fresh. When I have to rehash it, it gets a little, nah. Anyway. I was thinking about, uh, I spoke to you earlier yesterday about, uh, I had met this man and he was going to, uh, he had to go to court for uh, some, a different, uh, different discrimination case. While on his job, some white people have been uh, uh, harassing him. I don't know, I didn't get the full details, but it's some white and he's black. Excuse me. And uh, also in the situation is that, uh, what I was, I loved about it, and um, is that he had two more people that were going to show up, so it would be three of them. It's not one person, and I thought that was wonderful. And also the lady that that, that was there, uh, 
a uh, lady was around, she was talking about, she told him, she informed him, she said, I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself. And I was like, wow, you know, that's what I've been talking about. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, as soon as our conversation began to get rich, all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, I got called away. But I'm like, that's powerful. And that's what I was thinking about. If black people stand together, like I said, I'm not hating on no white people because I know all white people are not like her. So forget that. You know what I'm saying? Because our God already revealed to me some things that's going on where somebody's trying to take my focus. And I understand it. Now, I didn't understand it at first, but now I understand it. So anyway, like I was saying, uh, when we were sitting there and we all three black and we sitting there and we were, we were talking. I'm talking about we were, we were talking and we were discussing, we were communing. You feel me? I'm talking about we was one. Being on the same page with a person feeling and saying what you believe is a powerful thing. It's a spiritual moment. And uh, so anyway, this morning I was thinking about that. I'm like, you know, I wanted to say that to him, but I didn't. I, I know I have to take my time before I get into things. I couldn't rush the situation. Plus he had things on his mind. But I, it would be awesome if when a person is going to court, just like myself, I plan on completing this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to complete it regardless. But when I'm going to court for a, a discrimination issue, I, uh, 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 anything involving a black on white situation, wouldn't it be beautiful if we as a black person, if we get time and we could take off our, from our job, which I know you could take off from your job because a lot of you took off from your job a holiday, whatever it was, when you were going to see Mary J. Black and she canceled on you. So anyway, mm -hmm. if we could take off, although we probably miss some days, we don't have that many days left, <laughs> and we're going to get points. <laughs> anyway, if we had the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? If we had the opportunity and we showed up in court for that person, we don't get in there loud and hollering, oh, we this and we got saying, we don't need to do all of that. Just appearance. Just appearance when a person's going to court for some type of discrimination issue. I'm not talking about police things. We're not on that. I'm talking about the situation with the neighbor. I'm talking about certain court cases that we know the person is in the right and they're not wrong. What if we show up in court for that situation? We just be there, have our presence there. If they ask who you here you for, who you here for, we here for the defendant. Are we here for the plaintiff? You feel me? If we come in, we show up and we show out. If we do those things, don't you think that we would be heard? The same thing too. A lot of people are not gonna like this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Every time you look around, they want to come in and they want to cut people's food stamps. Uh, I'm going to eat as I talk on it. really going to face me. But anyway, they want to come in and they got all this stuff out. They want to P-test you. I'm going to say another word. Y'all know me. Watch me. <laughs> uh, you know, I exit if, it's, if I say too much. But anyway, they want to drug test us. I'm going to say this real fast because I'm going to put this out real quick. I'm going to upload this before I leave because I've been letting them go and then try to upload them when I get back. Which, thank God, they still work. My bill raised up, too. I don't know why, but anyway. Hmm. That's out of my pocket, so whatever. Anyway. <sighs> what I'm saying is, they want to drug test us. I don't get food stamps. I don't get any public assistance. Well, I don't get food stamps. <laughs> I get assistance every now and then, but anyway. In order to get food stamps and welfare, they want to pee test you. They want to do all these drug testing and stuff like that. I don't feel that you should feel, are we as a people, black people, really poor people. I don't feel you should be ashamed because you, you, you want uh, food stamps or you need food stamps. Instead of feeling ashamed about it and not opening your mouth about it because society tries to make you feel bad, because you asked them for public assistance. Why not go ahead and gloat in it? Why not speak up and say, it is my right to have it. It is your right to have food stamps. It is your right not to be drug tested for it. For the simple fact that if you need to be drug tested to get food stamps, or we need to be drug tested to get food stamps and welfare, then the people that's in the, in the government, uh, food stamp offices, all these people, well, not so much the food stamp offices, I'm, I'm going to back up all that, but our politicians. The people that's passing these rights. 
Why don't they get P-tested? I recall not long ago that they requested that uh, one senator. I was taking a class. I forget what it was about. I don't know. I was my psychology class or one of them I was taking, and they was going to uh, they want requested a drug test on this politician, and he pulled up some type of law or something, and he got out of it. But we need to take and start standing up for our rights. We need to start speaking up about that. If you're going to do me, let me do you. Tit for tat. That's the way it should be. If you want to drug test me, you know, and you want to make a ruckus, ooh, listen to that word. You want to make a ruckus because you've given me something that is my innate right. How is it? How is it your right? Let me stop eating and let me talk for a minute. Let me take a little sip because my head's hurt and I'm talking to you with my head hurt and I haven't taken an ass or anything yet, but I think it's a caffeine headache, which I got to stop my caffeine again. Anyway, you want to know how is it your right that you should get food stamps and you should get welfare. It is your right because the Bible tells you that it's your right. America is really supposed to be based on the Bible, our rights, and then it's rights. In the uh, amendments, in the amendments, it tells us, it says that we have the right in the pursuit of happiness. Okay? Yeah, I got to get them, I got to pull them out for you, but in the, uh, when they was writing the amendments and stuff like that, it's the first ten amendments and then it's all the amendments and all of that stuff, I got to pull my books out for that. But anyway, it talks about the pursuit of happiness, and it says that all of us have the N.A. right of that, and we definitely American. You definitely American. We're more American than anybody because we're the ones that help build this land. When you go back in history, you want to get deeper and talk about slavery and stuff, because I didn't like talking about it, but then it's a reality. So since we want to bring it up, we, done, we dug and built all of this little land, plotted the land, cotton, all this type of thing. We did free labor. We didn't get reimbursed for it, but hello, that's another topic. But anyway, the topic we are on now is that's why you have an innate right. It's because it's your pursuit of happiness. If you don't have a job, you don't have an income, you don't have anybody to babysit your kids, your children, and nine out of ten times the parents need to be in the home. The mama out of daddy need to be in the home with a lot of these children. Not saying that's our bad, just to be there to lead and guide the kids. You need to get some food stamps. You need to get welfare. Speak up. Open your mouth. We need to get together. We need to start being present. And I'm guilty myself of not getting out her vote because I'm one of them people that would sit back on it. I ain't going to talk about one of them people. I used to sit back on my butt talking about my vote don't count, which I always voted independent when I did vote because, I, I, to be honest, I didn't know nothing about politics. You know, I just knew lots of time when I did vote one time, it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, so I just gave up on it. So, I, I understand now that within society now we have a voice. Yeah, it's some crooked stuff that can go on in politics. But one thing I can say, if we get out and we, we get together, wow, that headache is kicking my butt. If we get together, we come together and, and we fight for what we believe is right. We fight for our own rights. We speak up about welfare. We speak it up about uh, health care. But we need to get out and vote. We need to make ourselves, our, our voices heard. We need to make our presence known. Because sometimes when you're talking, it don't mean nothing. But if you see 100,000 black people go out and vote for one candidate, and then you look at the, uh, you look at the little uh, states and stuff that they represent, and you know darn well you outnumber them in each state, then okay, then there's something wrong. And even then, when something's wrong, we need to speak up and voice our opinion about that, not just sit back and say, ah, we knew it was crooked. Now, now we knew it was crooked. Let's vocalize. Let's verbally talk about why we think, what we think and believe that went on and what happened and how we can make it different and then go out here and start practicing and put it in the work to make that change on making voting, voting correct, make voting system legal and right for the people, make it justified, you know, let's stop letting things happen to us, you know, let's stop talking about it, let's stop waiting for somebody to come, the great I am, looking for Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, like I said, uh, you know, like I said, God be talking, you know, I get chills because God talks to me, not only does he talk to me, he start revealing some things, so, you know, I was talking yesterday, I said I wish I could get back to my reading because I really love to read. So I got an opportunity to get into my reading. You know, God kind of messed up my computer a little bit. So while it was down, because I get addicted to it, 
I got all that I got time to start reading and so I read over some books and stuff and um in the process of reading I turned back on the T V and woe and behold, God started showing me some things and uh I got some, you know, my you know, like I said, I'll be wanting to give up and then it's all of a sudden, you know, God just sparked something in me and uh, he showed me third good Marshall. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a movie getting ready to come out about it. Like I said, I just do computers, but like I said, God got away. If God want to talk to you, he'll talk to you. And uh, anyway, they said before there was Malcolm X, uh, before there was Martin Luther King, there was Thurgood Marshall. Hello, I'm black. Didn't didn't know all of this, you know. And so I do now. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thurgood Marshall was the first black to be on the Supreme Court justice. Hey, yeah, uh-huh. I ain't slow all the time. Yeah. Third good Marshall. Yeah. His mama was a school teacher. His daddy was uh worked on the train. Worked on the train and stuff like that. But uh yeah, uh powerful, powerful, powerful. He was raised by his mama and his daddy, you know what I'm saying? Uh mm. Yeah, in Baltimore. Yeah, and uh he ended up going to college and everything and uh uh, he's the one that did a uh, board of education, yeah, Brown versus the board of education, if I'm correct, you know, um, talk about segregation, you know, so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I have to finish, uh, complete that rest of that program, I have it at the bottom of my screen, it should be down there, so I need to complete that, but, uh, third good marshal, you know, uh, Sometimes when I'm laying down, even though I go to sleep, I listen to it. If I don't watch something, I listen to it. So I need to watch it. But I was listening, so I listened to it, you know, up to the time of his death and everything. And even before he died, he fought. But they used to call him Mr. Civil Rights, you know. And uh, he was a lawyer for the NAACP, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I learned, yeah. A headache getting relieved, right. So, uh very powerful. So let me go ahead. I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to get back with you. And like I said, God got some things going on, but we need to start speaking our mind. We don't need to be ashamed of somebody giving us something. We don't need to be ashamed of being on Section 8. We don't need to be ashamed of being in public housing because that's what society wants you to do is be ashamed of something. And then if you're ashamed of it, then you're not going to speak about it. But if you start getting some pride in it, and the pride is that, thank God, shoot, believe me, I'm going to tell you this and then I'm going to get out of here. I was working a job one time, uh, and it came to me where I was working at. I'm going to tell you, uh, I was working at BG Reed. Yeah, y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. And I was living in Park Hill, and I was working there. And uh, it's a paper company. And uh, I was working there, and uh, uh, some uh, uh, black chicks, they was on the line, like, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, I'm going to say it real fast because I got to get ready to leave. Uh, you know where I'm going. So anyway... Uh, so they was on the line, so they start talking uh, this. I, I, yeah, I was there. That was one. This is one incident, but it occurred again. But excuse me. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I don't see how people can live in the projects. You know, people live in the projects. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 uh they the uh, they video big something. They video freaks or something. Now they mostly freaks or something. Cause I had two incidents. This incident, then I had another incident. She said something about people in the project, uh, they ain't got no money, and they poor, and uh, 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 they ain't about, you know, just talking about them. And then I heard, another, I was working another job, and the chick said, everybody that lives in Park Hill got AIDS. Both incidences, I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, I only had two kids then. I didn't have all three of my kids. I, I, I think uh, the second incident, I had three kids, but the, uh, the first one, I only had two. And, uh, so anyway, you know, I'm trying to stay quiet, and they just kept on, you know. They like they this this is black chicks now. They don't get it twisted. We get, we got some of our own that'll turn against you. But anyway, so I said I'm staying quiet, and I said, uh, mm, yeah, no, nobody know me, but I said, yeah, I live in the project, you know. And like I said, I'm thinking about that too. People try to act like I'm hard. It ain't about being hard. And and, and I, I I want you to I'm gonna get with you on that. I'm gonna keep it to myself, but I'm gonna tell you about that. You know, because uh, that's how society try to do. If you speak up, then, you know, you're trying to be hard. You're trying to be a man and all that. But like I said, I just got some history. And God just, uh, when, when, I, when, when the devil comes and try to whisper, 
to make me be defeated. God comes back and he encourages me and he picks me up and he did and he lifted me up. It's nothing wrong with speaking your mind. And anyway, I told both of the helpers and I told the other one too. I said, I live in Park Hill and I told them right there and I'm not poor and nothing like that. I said, I'm not no freak and all that type of thing and I live there, you know, and uh, in the other situation, I told the chick, I said, I live in a project and I don't have no AIDS. I live in Park Hill, I don't have no A, and they just stood there looking, because there wasn't nothing for them to say. But my point is, believe me, they learned a lesson, and they're black, and I'm black, and they learned a lesson. Watch your mouth. Watch who you're talking about, especially when you're stereotyping. That's why I said I don't really like statistics and stereotyping, you know, because they get a little bit of somebody say something, and then you get people run on a job, and what, you know, woo, y'all know it. But I'm going to say this real quick, because I'm on a roll right now, so I got to say it. I got to, I got to. <laughs> you know, you get on the job and you start running your mouth and you're black, then the white people hear you saying it, then they take it to their little people and it's like, oh yeah, you know the day on the job, I heard some black people saying that people in Park Hill and people in here and people there and black people don't have nothing, they live in the projects and black people got diseases and all that. Then you start in a rumor and the rumor takes off until somebody believes that it's the truth. And then the other black people that know nothing of how the rumor got started and sit back wondering, like, what happened? What happened? And then they're going to initially think our white people got it started. But see, it's not that case. See, that's why I said know the facts. That's why I love about, like, at base, Pastor Williams say, get into study. Like he used to always say when I first went to the church, get your Bible. You know, which I don't call my Bible all the time, really, because I'm prone to leave stuff. You know, I get up leave stuff. Thank God I can keep up with my purse on time. And that's only because I got mints in and a bunch of bills. But other than that, you know, they take my purse. They hurry up, bring it back. <laughs> but uh, like I said, though, but yeah, you know, be careful when you're talking about people. You know what I'm saying? We all guilty of it, including myself. You know, but we got to be careful when we run in our mouths talking about each other. We don't need to down each other. You know what I'm saying? We, I know we're going to do what we do, but we got to be careful when we do it in public, in public places. Because other people and other nationalities, this is not just white people, other nationalities take off with that. And so we need to start standing up for one another. And, you know, we need to practice what we preach. And like I said, I, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me. You know, it's like that little thing they got, speak up, shut up, because that was in my, uh, on my mind this morning, too. You know, it talks about reality. And we need to start having a reality. You know, they talk about they'll show fights on buses and all this and that. They'll show car accidents. You know, they film it, you know, and stuff like that. You know, and, and I was kind of against it at first. And I'm not, a, I didn't join it, but I'm, I said it's beautiful. Because if somebody dealing with reality, if somebody making a stand about something, you know, because if you see, if you don't see it, then you don't know that it's wrong. You don't, you don't know that it's there. And so they, they publicly post a little different, you know, fights and stuff on buses and things. And like I said, it's not all black people that showing fighting. You know, you got all different nationalities fight. But what I'm speaking on is we as a people, we need to stand together. I don't understand, you know, this hit me too and my head is hurting on my left side. Like, I don't know what. I almost said another bad word. But, uh, you know, all, the lady was saying this and it's true. Our culture stick together. You know, the Muslims, and I experienced it with my, with working with them. When they work with you, they work with themselves. They with, they with themselves. They speak to you, whatever. They might help you with this or that. But other than that, they sit at the table together. All the other cultures sit at the table together. You got some blacks might sit with each other, and it's usually the men. But the women, they'll spread out. But you rarely find where we stick together. And somewhere in the Jim Crow era, wherever, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to try to dig into it. Somewhere in there, we start losing our own identity. I remember in the day we used to have our little parties. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I wanted us to get back to. I want us to get back to us. Not trying to fit in to society. I want us to start fitting into us. I want us to have our little parties. We used to have dance competitions. Y'all remember that? We used to have our little black festival and all that type of thing. All that guy where we would go. Remember we used to get? You remember? Remember? We used to get our free hair product. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you know I need some because I don't know what I'm doing with my hair. But I'm going to wait till it naturally grow. I tell you that. I'm not weaving it no more. I'm tired of that. I got to get these fake nails off. But I'm going to get some more back on. I'm looking for a black chick to do them. But anyway. Uh-huh. Which I probably, with this job, I'm going to restore. I'm probably not. Oh, yeah, did I tell you? God blessed me with another job. I'm sorry. Yeah, they fired me and somebody else hired me. But I don't know what I'm going to have to go through on this job. But, hey, y'all pray for me. 
you know, pray for me. I don't know. God be opening doors and this job is really, oh my God, I'm getting ready to go to church. Y'all know why I'm getting ready to go. I got to go to the master. I got to go get some of him because the job's going to start, so I'm not going to be able to do it on Wednesday. So anyway, you know, if God continues to open the door, because like that pastor said, I'll be having plan A, B, and C, which I didn't have a plan. All I knew was to keep moving. So anyway, let me get back. I remember when we used to get the free hair products. I thought I lost my place. No, I didn't. And I'm getting ready to get out of here. But we used to have the free hair products and all this type of thing. I mean, it was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? We used to be together. We used to have our competitions and stuff like that. You know, the singing competitions. It was us. That was about us. You know what I'm saying? We had our little sports and stuff that we did. You know what I'm saying? We had all those little things. You know, where is that at? We starting to accumulate into their world. Where is our world? We're becoming something that we're not. You know, we need to, we, 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 we're going to change. You know what I'm saying? I, I got two, I got faith in us. I got faith in us. We're powerful. We're powerful, beautiful people, man. I know that without a doubt. We're strong. We just know, sometimes we just need that voice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like a homie love a friend. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to have that person in your ear like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, girl, forget all of them. You know what I'm saying? You nice looking. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. You know what I'm saying? You can do good in school. You know, you just got to figure out how you're going to learn. And then once you find it, you go in there and you get that degree. So we, that's what we need. We, you know, we need coaches, not just one coach. We need a lot. But I have faith that the young people that's coming up, believe me, God's got some plans. If he, he got a couple of them. It's not no one. He's got a couple of them that's getting ready to come up here. And they're getting ready to let the world know that we are black and we are proud. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just feel it in my spirit. You know what I'm saying? God, you know, some things, you know what I'm saying, been talking about. But I just start feeling that. You know what I'm saying? I've been looking at some things and looking at myself and looking at my age. And I know that God got plans. I don't want my grandbabies to ever be called nigger. You know, not by no white person. You know, not by no person of any other culture. Because it's not just white people that can call you a nigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I know people saying about the word, it is a word that can affect you because it's the meaning when a person says it. The intent. You know, when you go to court, that's what they'll tell you. What was your intent when you called that person a nigga? Yeah, you know. So, like I said, it's a whole lot going on, but uh, we need to be a part of it. We need to be in the forefront of what's going on. We need to be making changes. We need to be making new laws. We need to be voting. We need to get out here and speak up. You know what I'm saying? Stop getting focused on, oh, the police We tell, yeah, okay, that's an issue. Okay, let's get, if we get to get a group and do that. But in the meantime, they cutting your food stamps, they cutting your, your medical benefits. You feel me? I don't even have none right now, boo-boo. They, they, I don't even want to get deep in that because it ain't about me right now. But that's what we need to look at. Let's look at these issues. Let's not just all of a sudden, everybody, let's run downtown on that. Let's run down. We're we going to run downtown and you want to run in the middle of the street and you want to curb or uh, fans and stuff like that. Curse some fans talking about stop drug testing people and taking their food stamps because undercover is a, it, it's a, it's a sinister plan. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. What's the hidden motive? It's a hidden motive under there talking about I'm a drug test you to give. It ain't none of your business. If you're giving me something that's supposed to benefit my house or benefit my kids, it's none of your business. If you got a chick that she's selling her food stamps so she can get some crack, then deal with her. I deal with him that's doing it. Don't take and hurt everybody because of one person. Because then I have a problem with that. Because then I know there's a sinister plan behind it. You know. So, like I said, you know, let's, let's get out here and start dealing it. Get more involved. Like I said, I, I wasn't aware of a lot of things in politics. But, you know, I am now. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's better uh, late than never. <laughs> I'm going to get out for her toodles. You have a wonderful day. God bless you. Uh, kisses to my grandbabies who I haven't seen. I have one with me. He was a little thing. He learned the B word. And oh my God, he learned it from somebody. And he just sung a song about it. Oh my God. Oh my God. He just went off on that word. A B this, a B that. And I just looked at it. You know I had to laugh. Because I was like, mm hmm. And that's from his mama. I'm granny. That's his mama. Oh my God. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I love them and I pray for them. You know what I'm saying? I pray that to God that they grow up in a society when they can open up the telephone book like in Atlanta, Georgia and see black faces and black businesses open. That's what I want to see. 
I want to see my grandbabies open up the dictionary and see Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Thurgood Marshall. I want them to see them in there. I want them to open their history books and read about Thurgood Marshall. You know, not just Martin Luther King. I want them to read about Thurgood Marshall, read about Malcolm X. Not only read about his, his fight for justice and how he was talking about picking up arms, read about how he changed his mind and he started embracing the white people that he once hated. Let's get the whole story, not just part of it. But that's what I, I want to see. I want to see my grandbaby see themselves in, their, in a positive manner, not in a negative manner. Not always associated and affiliated with welfare. I want them to, and, and talking about lynching, I want them to be associated with how they did the great art. Langston Hughes, uh, Harlem, how we own town, how we stood up for ourselves. Uh, it's a movie, uh, uh, Defense, something, Soldiers of Defense or something. You know, let's talk about that. Let's put that in, in the school system. That's what I want to see. You know, uh, hmm. God bless you, and oh, Lord Jesus, it just came out. Oh, Lord, it felt good. I'm going to eat the rest of my toast and take a little drink here and take me something for this headache, and I shall be at church. I guess they have a church. I don't know, but I'm going. Uh, I got to meditate and uh, let the Lord speak to me. You know, I just hear him there. I hear him everywhere, but I hear him there. Sometimes it's going where he is. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye-bye. God bless you.